My name is Ilyanku. I play defensive tackle and I am from Ottawa, Canada. My grandmother, she's Ojibwe. She's from Doki's First Nation. My mom always made it a point to implement indigenous qualities into our daily lives. We always ended up going to powwows where you get to experience you know, the people that are surrounded by you, the music, the dance, the colors. There's so many different aspects of native culture that my mom wanted to show us. And so many things that I feel as though have been kind of shrouded behind a, I guess, a curtain. My name is Nicole Ancou. I am Ojibwe. I am the proud mother of Elion. To be the first indigenous NFL player from our reserve of Dukies Bay, that's a big privilege for him. He has a lot on his shoulders in the sense of representing where he comes from. From the moment that I met Eli, I knew that he was uh, an Ogichita and an Ogema. Both a warrior and a leader. That's our obligation to our people. He's out there doing the work that needs to be done. I feel like I have a duty, a duty to my people and a duty to my community. As a child growing up, I would watch all the NFL players. I would watch, you know, the Super Bowls. I would watch all the games and I would see these players and I'd be like, wow, like what if one day I was in that position? Finally, I got into that position and I achieved my dream, playing the NFL. But it comes to a point where you kind of question, what more can I do? My answer to that was what I saw in front of me. And that was help my community any way I could. Two causes that I've taken up personally are, one, the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, and two, the issue of Every Child Matters, which is simply a saying for the issue of residential schools in Canada. My mom, I remember her telling me a story about how the government made it a mandate to have Indigenous children attend these schools. The goal was to erase the Indian aspect, their Indian culture, the language, whatever ties they may have to their ancestors, to erase it and make it anew. My mom made sure to stress is, your grandfather fought to keep us around. Children died there. Graveyards and schools do not go together. There should never be a graveyard at a school. My mother did go to residential school, and uh, I did become a member of the, uh, the child welfare system right from birth because they deemed it necessary to take me away from my mother. I had no idea where I came from. It took me 40 years to actually find out where I came from, who my people were, and near the end I found out where my parents were, and I've been fortunate enough to meet my three sisters and brother this particular year. Not knowing where you come from, not knowing who your parents are. The one thing that was good about uh, life was that sports was introduced to my life, which I thought would be somehow a release or, or yeah, an escape from what I was going through. I just hope that people understand that uh, it's not something you just get over. It's something we live with every day. Missing and murdered Indigenous women, an epidemic that impacts families across the country. Groups gathered today to remember lives lost and families who are still grieving. The Dreamcatcher Foundation. It is basically a nonprofit that my fiance and I started a few years ago. It focuses on the issue that, proportionally speaking, uh, Indigenous women and girls have been going missing or murdered, and there's been a lack of uh, support um, from the government side, in terms of from the community, um, in order to address these issues. His foundation is making sure that the red hand on our faces is seen, is heard, making sure that our women are not forgotten and that we should never be forgotten. People have found it easy to abduct or kill these girls. Tribal laws and regular laws work in a different way. People have been known to go onto tribal land and abduct these girls knowing that nothing can really be done. People get really brave when they know they can take advantage of a certain demographic and not really suffer the consequences of their actions. 
We want to support these families. We want to be able to be there for them, whether that's financially speaking, spiritually speaking, and socially speaking. This cause is important to me because this could have been my mother and this could have been my sister. This could have been any woman in my life that I care about. The fact that it's happening at such an alarming rate, I can only begin to imagine the trauma that's affecting these communities. There has to be a certain level of empathy to be able to see that people of my culture and my background are being directly affected by this. Kids look up to athletes. They look up to their role models. When we have a voice, it's our responsibility to make it loud and clear what our intentions are. For me, once I saw my vision in front of me, it was very clear that I had a duty to my people and to the people who are supporting me as an athlete and as a person.